Princess in this video, I'm going to talk about Little Princess in Fairy Forest. Uh, I probably talked briefly about this in uh, my TBR videos, but I'll go a little bit more into like how I was feeling about it. From the back, the hope of, prin of a princess lies in a dragon's claws. Little Princess in Fairy Forest is a breathtaking saga of a young princess, Lala, who must fight for her very existence with the last of her royal knights, Gideon Thorn. Her pursuer, the tyrannical lord designs Siegfried, will stop at nothing to wed Princess Lala and legitimize his reign. He's already massacred the rest of the royal family. Princess Lala and Gideon are doggedly pursued even as they flee into the Forbidden Forest, a land relegated to myth and legend because of dragons, the mortal enemies of knights. Join Lala and Gideon as they flee for their lives in an attempt to survive the traitor's deadly machinations. Gideon is willing to do anything to protect his princess, even if it means engaging in the mighty dragons in combat. Um, so, <laughs> that's a lot to put out there. Uh, so we do have an overthrow right from the beginning of the book. Uh, Lala is fleeing with her knights. And it's, it's, very, it's a very dark opening, I will say that, because we have them fleeing... And there's two knights in particular that she's with. She's a little bit scared of, not scared, but like he intimidates her. So let me just make sure I get, I get their names. There's a little list in here. Oh, I guess it doesn't have his in this one. Let me just see if I can find it. Rob. So Captain Rob is one that she very much idolizes and feels protected by and she's a little bit intimidated by Gideon Thorne. However, right at the beginning Rob realizes that he's got to take a stand. He tells Gideon to take Lala into the forest and he's going to stand and fight them and they all know that means Rob's going to die. He's not going to make it. Um, and it's, it's really dark because you do kind of get this feeling for him right away even though you only see him a couple pages and it just it's very sad but Lala does her best as a princess she's very little she's I don't know, maybe seven like she's she's very very little but she does her best to stay strong and to go with Gideon even though he intimidates her she thinks he looks very like gruff um, they flee into the forest together very quickly after getting into the forest, they're approached by a dragon, and Gideon feels that he has to fight the dragon, you know, and protect her, but it turns out that the dragon is not that big of a threat. The dragon actually ends up becoming, like, second dad <laughs> and raising Lala, so th the three of them actually end up making a safe home in the forest. Uh, they... So they find the shelter, but at the same time, they run into who would be Lala's very godmother, and she helps put a protective spell over them so that the three of them will be protected in the woods. And it's not as bad, I guess, as one would think. So for, I think it's about a year, they live a very like peaceful life. Uh, Rob will go, not Rob, Rob's dad, Gideon will go into town and get uh, supplies for them and bring them back. And it really is very much like my two dads where Gideon and the dragon, and I, I can't remember, I feel, I feel like the dragon has a name and I can't remember the name, but they are like parents to Lala and they help to raise her. And they're super cute. I love their interactions. It's it's such a soft and cozy vibe with the three of them, even though I think that most of this story is a very dark fairy tale because always in the background is Siegfried and his machinations about trying to wed this seven-year-old girl. Um, and I believe, if I'm not mistaken, he was the uncle, but he can't he can't really take over the power of the throne. You need to ha have the blood or be wed with that particular line of which is only Lala. They, they, so he has no legitimate right to the throne. Only Lala does. He can have a right to the throne if he's married to Lala, but he doesn't in general. He holds no actual power. 
even though he's done this violent overthrow. And that's why he's so doggedly pursuing Lala, is just to get her to wed him, even though that's so disturbing because she's a little girl and gross. Um, and so that's part of the darkness of this story is it reaches this point, uh, and I say all this, but like this happens pretty quickly. It's not that long of a book where he decides to send his soldiers out to all of the towns and capture every little girl that would be Lala's age in an attempt to find her. And so all of these little girls, including from the town that Gideon has been going and uh, providing, like getting supplies from, uh, they're all being taken from all of the towns and dragged back to the castle where they're then examined by Siegfried. And if they're deemed unworthy, if they're not the princess, he doesn't care what happens to them. And so uh, I guess the big impetus for what happens toward the end of the book is that they're just ditched in the woods and there's hundreds of poor little dead children and it's very dark, as I said. So it's, I, this is such a mixed story because so much of it is like light and cute and cozy and it's very much juxtaposed with like dark death and like just horrible things from this guy. And I mean, you definitely want them to go and defeat him and get him out of the picture because he's just horrible, including the fact that he wants to marry this seven-year-old girl is gross. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, but it's good. I, I loved this, and for as short as it is, it's so engaging, really runs that whole gamut of being, like, cozy and then being really dark and depressing. <laughs> um, but it's, it's great. I also love, there's a lot of insert art in here. That I, it's so sketchy, like it's not um, clear, solid lines. It's very like rough sketch. And I, I actually really love that. It just adds this texture element to it that I think helps with the kind of story that this is. You can see from the line that it's, yeah, it's very lined texture artwork that works really, really well with this story. Oh, that's a, I forgot, I forgot to mention there's like a witch character in here too. <laughs> there's, oh, this is so good. There's so many good fairy tale elements that come into play with this book. And I don't know, I was amazed by like how quick and short it was for how much is packed in here. Without the afterword, because that's always like the letter from the writer, it's 206 pages. And they are... They're dense, but not like, oh, there's so many words crammed on a page. No, it's just each word has like a purpose and it just moves the story forward. And it's so good. <laughs> it's like reading a very in-depth fairy tale. And I don't know, I had, I had a good time with this story. Like I loved reading it. I loved being in the world. I finished it very quickly. I cannot recommend this one enough. And I love that it's standalone. There's no long series that you have to get to, so if you're looking for a very quick standalone light novel, then Little Princess in Fairy Forest is a good one to pick up. Uh, it is out by, let's see who did this one, uh, Cross Infinite World, which I think they're one of the only ones that likes to do the <laughs> standalones, uh, because I feel like every standalone I pick up is from Cross Infinite World. But yeah, would highly recommend this one. I think people should pick it up, especially if you just want a quick read. and. I think especially during like the holiday season, it's easier to get through a quick read. <laughs> you don't have a lot of time. I know I don't. So this is a good one. That's it for this video. Until next time. Bye. <laughs>